from the Pension Integrity Project of the Reason Foundation is Jen Sidorova. Jen, I appreciate the time. I got to start there with this Pension Integrity Project. I know the topic is politics, other stuff, but you got to tell me about what you do day to day. Tell me about that Pension Integrity Project at Reason. Yeah, we serve as a consultant to state governments, um, and we work with um, those pension plans who would like to put their plans back on the solvency track and make sure that they can pay the promised benefits to the public pension sector retirees. So these are teachers, uh, government workers, all that. What seems to be the biggest problem with some of these funds? Is it the expanding, the quickly growing base of of retirees, uh, you know, boomers versus millennials, all that? What's going on? Uh, Well, one of the key problems is that um, the interest rate, the um, investment interest rate, is the key um, to growth of those pension plans. And the pension plans haven't adjusted their expectation. Um, And now uh, what what we see is that we're just simply not getting enough money into uh, the bank um, with a kind of slowing down investment returns. And this leads to, you know, problems down the road. Although we don't see them right now, we Mm -hmm. probably will see them in the future if plans don't do something. Right now, we probably will see um, something in 30 years. With costing, uh, with the costs uh, for lending increasing and interest rates going up, we should see uh, a bit of a windfall, I suspect, over the next, I don't know, 12, 24 months if if those rates stay a little higher, right? Right. This is likely that the rates will still go um, be up, and we actually see the inflation at historic high with the CPI at 8.5% annually. We haven't seen anything like that in the past 40 yeah. years, really. And um, it is actually um, what one of the consequences one of the consequences of the expansion of the welfare program of printing the money. And um, Democrats are likely to see it during the upcoming election season. They likely to see that, um, you know, Americans see that, Americans realize that those policies haven't led to anything good. Jen Sidorova, is with the Pension Integrity Project of the Reason Foundation. Okay, so here's the call on politics. So I saw this write-up that said that President Biden and his Democrat Party, they need to wake up and acknowledge reality before the midterm elections. And I saw that sentence, I'm going, no, they don't. <laughs> Things are just fine the way they are. We're gonna, they're going to get their, their, their clocks checked come November, and we need that as a nation. Well, the thing is that Democrats are actually resigning at historic rates. We see a 30-year high. We haven't seen, um, you know, anything like that since really pretty much the 90s, the early 90s, when about 40 Democrats resigned in one election cycle. And this is only the third time we see a resignation like that since pretty much the late 70s. And at least at the last instance of that, it was in 2018 when... Republicans uh, resigned. In, 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 I was about to state, say, and that was their sentiment and their disagreement uh, about the presidency of Trump. Yeah. And now we kind of see similar trends with Biden, and it's sort of interesting. Biden's, um, you know, approval rate is right now at roughly thirty nine, forty percent, and Trump had about the same rates uh, roughly a year into his presidency. Well, the Trump averaged at a higher rate. Yeah, it was about at forty-one percent. Okay. So I'm wondering if what's going to happen during this midterm, if the history is going to repeat itself. I would call it political karma, Jen, because yes, I was about to mention 2018. 2018 and the Republican lawmakers that were jumping ship like rats. They bought into the bogus Russia investigation, and it's political karma. It's what goes around comes around. Yeah, they were jumping ship because they did not defend. They did not believe the president was going to survive this. They saw the impeachment coming, and they jumped ship because of this bogus Russia investigation. Speaking of the bogus Russia investigation, the lowest number that Trump ever saw doesn't compare to the low number. And, and it was because of the Russia investigation, because of the lack of confidence in him and the American public that was believing how they were being spoon-fed every single day by CNN and the leftist MSNBC, New York Times, everybody. The continuous drumbeat of war against President Trump on Russia. The lowest number he saw doesn't compare to a lower number that Biden sees right now. In the Biden numbers based on just stupid decisions, bad policy. If all things, all things stay the same, Jen, between now and November, as bad as it is, and it's probably going to get even worse, especially for me here on the border, how bad will it be for Democrats come November? Well, the thing is that um, um, Democrats capitalized a lot on election against Trump two years ago, 
and now they cannot do this anymore. Uh, unfortunately, the whole identity of the party uh, was at least part, partially formed by this hatred, and it had a profound impact on the party itself. And um, this sort of, um, you can even see in the Elizabeth Warren um, latest op-ed to New York Times, and where she's calling for the unity. But there wasn't much substance to this unity two years ago, and right now they're scrambling, they're trying to find, um, to, to get a united front, but unfortunately there was also a lack of leadership from the White House, and just a lack of clear messaging, really. Uh, White House had to retract uh, a few a few uh, public statements, or, you know, comment, make comments in public statements from President Biden in the last couple of weeks and throughout this year, the last couple of weeks, the comments about the mask mandate in Title 42, and then his comment about uh, changing the regime in Russia. So that uh, clearly is not a good sign overall and not a good uh, shape that uh, they're going into this midterms. And with the New York Times and the audio release on Kevin McCarthy and other close Republicans, Mitch McConnell, the turtle, and how they were talking smack, talking bad things, January 10th, after January 6th, just trying to poo-poo Donald Trump, they fear him. I know they fear him. They're going to keep releasing audio and bad stories, all related to January 6th and the riot by some idiots, because that's all they have. Jen, thank you for your time. Jen Sidorova with Pension Integrity Project at Reason Foundation.